Thank you for tuning in to the Forefront Radio. I'm your host, Afio Levi Israel. Now, if you're interested in helping us promote our brand, please feel free to donate to our cash app. Our cash app is uh, dollar sign Afiel Levi. That's A-P-H-I-E-L-L-E-V-I. And that'll go directly to the Forefront Radio so we can produce more incredible shows for you to listen to. Now, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download this free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Thank you. My God is black, my skin is black, the power's close, we're getting it back. Awful alert, putting in work in the streets, giving the verse. My God is black, my skin is black, the power's close, we're getting it back. Awful alert, putting in work in the streets, we're giving the verse, we're giving them life, 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 we're giving them life. My God is black, my skin is black, the power's close, we're getting it back. Awful alert, putting in work in the streets, giving the verse. Inside the book, like seeing the mirror, that glass dark, it's soon to get clearer, they broke the heart, ain't talking about. I'm hugging and kissing you, bugging. I'm talking the mind of a guy. Yeah. So my people more than kind of a guy. Thinking anyone could make up a guy. That's why these saints gotta shut down the block. Put it on lock, close up the shop. Hope it's a rock, open the word. Cause if they don't, then it's open the hearse. Yeah. They don't know that they chosen it first. They firming, they killing, they shooting, they losing. Wow. Up inside the church, sleeping and snoozing. So we on the streets, teaching, rebuking, the loose. And the whole of the devil ain't mad. Waking up the sheep, reading the facts. Yeah. Guess it's time to move, no holding, back. no holding back. So I stay with the cracks, stay with the bag. I'ma bring it out, Christ is black. I'ma bring it out, better move back. Of me, just back of me. Yeah. Can't take this black of me. I keep uh, that. My name's black, my skin is black. The power's close, we're getting it back. Awful alert, putting your work in the streets, giving the verse. My God is black, my skin is black. The power's close, we're getting it back. Awful alert, putting your work in the streets, we're giving the verse. We're giving them life, 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 we're giving them life. My God is black, my skin is black. The power's close, we're getting it back. Awful alert, putting your work in the streets, giving the verse. My God black. We don't slack If you scoff, you a simp Cut them off to the quick They can't see, they need braille We give sight to the blind Walking dead with no side I got breath for they lungs Keep the laws and you live No meat for they bib On the milk, they gon' sip And if you come with that lip We gon' bang with the scripts On my Oh my God, if you can't keep the laws, you gon' melt in the flames when it burn Babylon. Uh, blood on my God, don't heed you a loss. You- and you gon' drift with the drops. Uh, my God is black, my skin is black, the power's close, we're getting it back. Awful alert, putting it work in the streets, giving the verse. My God is black, my skin is black, the power's close, we're getting it back. Awful alert, putting it work in the streets, we're giving the verse, we're giving them life, 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 we're giving them life. My God is black, my skin is black, the power's close, we're getting it back. Awful alert, putting it work in the streets, giving the verse. Don't know the Bible. Read. To whom to, to whom pertain it? To whom pertain it? Bring it out. Belongs to the adoption uh-huh. and, the glory and, the glory and the glory and the covenant. And the covenant. Look, why you waiting? They brain gone like decapitation. No knowledge, no laws. God, they forsaken. Put on slave ships, not a cruise line. Jacob, no martinis for that long trip. Stop playing. They changed our name with hot flames branded on our faces. Throw our kids in dirty water, alligator baiting. Hundred million dead people, blood on the pavement. You say Jesus, but I'm looking at these crackers like they Satan, like they Satan. Nigga playing, nigga playing. They paying for their crimes, calling statute limitations. They Saying that it ain't them, that it was their fathers Isaiah 14, say prepare them for their slaughter This for Mike Brown, Trayvon Martin, 
and never gardener. Babylon falling, fire burning arson. Christ coming back, real black like the charcoal. Burning up these heathen for the evils that they conjured. It's for us, our eyes have yet failed, for our vain help. In our watching, we have watched for a nation they couldn't save us. They slay us and get out free like they made us. But switch the game up, the black Messiah Look, will save us. I ain't finished. Esau soon will be diminished Mount Zion full of saviors Call him God's shit 144, Esau about to be a victim Keep the laws, then we get them On the day of vengeance Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Esau running for their life Like it's LA Fitness Revelation 18.6, double portion With them, try to hide the caves Like the king and let's get them He that leader with the sword, gonna die By the sword, they gonna be surprised Black Christ coming here for war they I ain't heard this before. No more nice Negroes. Time for real heroes. Esau be zero. Just like Nat Turner. Turn me up, we gone. Turn me up, we gone. And I'm out, it's with light. Now he's mad about the way we're teaching the bus. I'm as mad as hell. And I'm not gonna take this anymore. Us, our eyes have yet failed for our vain help. In our watching, we have watched for a nation they couldn't save us. They slay us and get out free like they made us. But I switch the game up, the black messiah can save Never us. Never trust my enemies, I know what you did to me. Locked in, loaded KJV, Revelations 1 and 3. Reading through these mysteries, our praises, now we got the keys. Unlocking hope and giving hope to those that seek the Holy Ghost. My holy folks gon' hold me down, exhorting on a daily basis. We found for temptation, crafty counsel just around the waist. Snooze, you lose, you lose, you snooze awake, you know you slugger I see brothers killing brothers, ministers, women raising monsters That's why we cry loud on you busters Scripping, ripping through the trenches in the seas of the ghetto My people at a lower stage, the prophets here to motivate Isaiah 61 and 1, grinding up these broken hearts Reform them till they make it. To shake the whole earth with a boom when I hit the surface They trembling nervous, they know I'm coming for certain Tomorrow all these niggas devour all of these serpents I patiently waited to turn up with fervent heat now that I'm activated I'm a blow cause it's World War 3, I hear you weeping Your morning, your nasty near the teeth Hiroshima and Nakasaki ain't got nothing on me I was raised by chemists, I was made for the judgment Don't be testing my limits, don't be pushing my buttons In the Bible they call me flame and rebuke And you know that that's the truth, but my homies call me new Come and nuke, I was sent here to destroy pleasures and sin In the day of darkness, even darker than when the day began Annihilation, no time for evacuations When these warheads split, it look worse than decapitations Woo. Repent or die, such a genocide or it's genocide You can't hide if you get left when the saints rise The wicked looking in the sky, and all they can do is cry And they already know why, cause it's judgment Gave up sin and started living righteous it's who I am, I knew I couldn't fight this When Christ come back, it's gonna be some mourning You never know this song could be your final warning Judgment day, judgment day When they crack the sky Judgment day, judgment day We're gonna die Judgment day Say only God can judge me, well trust me You don't wanna see judgment day And there'll be no more crying now So stop by your whining now the time for changes right now. Repent or die or judgment. I'm my best on the worst day. How you know? Because I know that's what the words say. He the steady serving doctors like a feast day. And to the line, so they keep their bagging these away. Yeah, they bagging these away. Silly Christians with their doctors, what the heathen say. They can serve the bag of tricks and that'll ease the pain. But it's only for a moment, I'm on the hand came. Now who the one to blame? When that black massage show, now that's another thing On and all the weakest hands, we showed them the way All and all the weakest hands, we showed them the way Straight is the way through the gate, that's the only way Started 
living righteous It's who I am, I knew I couldn't fight this When Christ come back, there's gonna be some mourning You never know this song could be your final warning Judgment day, judgment day When they crack the sky Judgment day, judgment day We're gonna die Judgment day Say only God can judge me, well trust me You don't wanna see judgment day And there'll be no more crying now So stop by your whining now uh, The time for change is right now Repent or die or judge me Gave up sin and started living righteous It's who I am, I knew I couldn't fight this When Christ come back, there's gonna be some mourning You never know this song could be your final warning Judgment day, judgment day When we crack the sky Judgment day, judgment day We're gonna die Judgment day You say only God can judge me Well trust me, you don't wanna see judgment day And there'll be no more crying now So stop by your whining now the time for changes right now Repent or die or judge me Sisters, how y'all doing this Sabbath day? Brothers, how are y'all doing? I'm noticing there's a lot more sisters than brothers. Lava says I'm starting to sound like Keith Sweat in my teachings. That's why there's a lot of sisters here. I'm going to have to change that. I have to bring back my women's class, classes. Offend a lot of sisters and then... <laughs> we'll get the balance back right there. We're going to um, open up with Luke chapter 4 about good news for oppressed people. Do y'all need good news? Yeah. That's right. I know I do. Good news for oppressed people. And it's an amazing thing how people associate the gospel or the good news for the dominant race on the earth that's oppressing and killing everyone. I'm like, well, what do they need good news for? They've made their own good news. The good news is only for oppressed people. It is not for countries and nations who, who uh, dominate, manipulate, and oppress world financial systems and nations and countries. The good news is not for them. It is not, let me repeat, it is not for them. Let's open up with Luke chapter 4 regarding the good news. The word gospel means good news. Luke chapter 4. Who's reading for me? Uh, right here, Bishop. Captain <sighs> Oh, I was looking at Nehemiah. <laughs> <laughs> you got a break today. You got a break today? All right, all right. Uh, Luke chapter 4, and let's start at verse uh, 14. The book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as, what, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And stood up for to read. So the custom amongst the Israelites was you enter the Sabbath, the synagogue on the Sabbath, and a male was chosen to read and explain scriptures. Uh, Officer Alicia, can you open up? Uh, give me the uh, color references. Now, I often show these during uh, Shout Out Tuesday, but I, I find I'm going to need it for today. For there may be new people online. Let's open up with light and truth. Let's start with that one right there. Show the cover. Put the cover on the screen. All right. All right. Light and Truth by Robert Benjamin Lewis. These books that we're reading were 
published in the 1800s. I have reprints. Let's go open up. All right. Uh, read that for us. In the second century, the Jews of Africa in the city of Cyrene on the Mediterranean revolted from the Romans. And after slaying 200,000 Greeks and Romans, the Jews were subdued with a great number massacred about A.D. 114. So it's very important that you understand we did flee into Africa. And when we fought the Greeks and the Romans, we started to win for a short time period. We slew 200,000 of them because it was war. Okay? But then they got the upper hand against us. Go on. Alicia. Let's start at the top. Just get the underlying words for me. Yes, sir. The word Negro. Negro is derived from the Latin word nigger. Latin term. Latin term nigger, meaning black. More, a marsh, a fen, a negro. So the word more means a negro. The word more means black. It's the same as negro. Negro is the Spanish word. And the Spanish word negro was first used around 1555. Go ahead. Negro, black more. Raise it up. More. A Negro, Negro, a black Moor, in parentheses, a Moor. Negro, an African by birth, or a descendant of one of full blood. Moor, a black man. Negro, a black Moor, a slave, a mean wretch. Moor, a black. In Dr. Webster's definition of the complexion of the Of the skin, he calls it the blood of Africa, or their descendants as follows. Man groom is all black, a full blood, a whole Negro. So let's pause. I want you to see this section right here. They had, uh, I don't know if the word is, the proper term is subgroups or subspecies, meaning depending on who your fathers were, whether it was you had a full-blooded uh, Black father and black mother, they called you a man groom, which meant a whole Negro. Go ahead. Sambo is three quarters blood. Quote, uh, parentheses, three quarters Negro. So a Sambo <laughs> whoa, is someone with three quarters blood. You had three quarters black blood in you. Go ahead. Mulatto is one half blood. Parentheses, one half Negro. So that means that your father could be black or your mother black, but the other parent is white. That's half. Go ahead. Quadroon is one quarter blood. Parentheses, one quarter Negro. Mm -hmm. Mestizo is a half quarter blood. Qu uh, parentheses, half quarter Negro. So I wanted to say this regarding all of that. Uh, when, when I show you the maps of um, how they sent us those of our people that were in Africa to the Americas. This right here kills the argument where you hear these stupid Israelites saying that um, that Northern Kingdom is not uh, our people. You ever hear this? You hear the stupidity being spoken of today? You hear this lava with these idiots saying that? Now let's say, because they don't know the history, let's say you didn't know about Second Ezra 13. The mere fact that when we when they brought us to North, Central, South America, and the islands, we were dealing with them. Sexually, I'm talking about marriages with them, and we had children. And that's what the, this right is going into. Go back to that section again. That's where you get the, the whole blood, the three-quarter blood, the one-half Negro, one-quarter. And they got the same thing for Latinos, too. We went over that in classes gone by. So, Amazak, Captain, uh, nigger again? Nigger. Nigger, a Latin word was formerly used by the Moors, the old Romans. I know somebody said, why are we saying nigger? Isn't it Niger? That's the French pronunciation, Niger. But the actual pronunciation is nigger. I know it offends some of your ears, but we've gone over lessons showing you proof, written proof, that that word was pronounced originally nigger. And then the southern whites added another G to it, but it was pronounced the same way. Go ahead. Nigger, a Latin word, was formerly used by the Moors, the old Romans, to designate any black. So anybody black was called nigger, no Niger, or Niger, if that makes you feel better. Now watch this right here. 
Micah the Moristite. This is from the book of Micah. Go ahead. A prophet of the Moors. So Micah the Moorishite is they're saying that he was a prophet of the blacks. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. Prophesied in the days of Hezekiah, king of Judah, and spake to all the people of Judah, the Moors. All the people of Judah, the blacks. Saying, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Zion shall be plowed like a field, and Jerusalem shall become heaps, a forest. So we were destroyed as a nation. Raise it up. Go to the next page. So this is the next book. This is a textbook of the origin and history, etc., of the colored people, originally published in 1841 by James W.C. Pennington. Go ahead. Read that. A stronger case is... No, let's start from the top. Go up. Let me see, Alicia. Uh, start from number one. Number one, page 96. The Portuguese who planted themselves on the coast of Africa a few centuries ago have been succeeded by descendants blacker than the Africans. Number two, a stronger case still is to be found in the fact that the descendants of a colony of Jews originally from Judea to the coast of Africa are black. Let you know, and many of the old scholars know that the Jews are black. They hide this stuff today. They hide this stuff today. Alicia, was there another book? Yes, give me that next one. This one we've gone to several times. Click it. This is a treatise on physical geography by A. Barrington, published in 18, that's say 1850 at the bottom? 1850. Okay, go into it. We just want to highlight areas. Now, they talk about the case of the Jews being both black and white. The white Jews are the converts. Those are the Khazars, also called the people of Herod. Read that. Thus, the Jews are a people who have ever, according to the prophecy, dwelt alone, without intermixing with the nations to this day. Now, this separate race, all descended from brown ancestors. All descended from brown ancestors. Go ahead. For Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob must have been as dark as Mar Yohanan. If not darker. So when you look at Mar Yohanan, he's very light. So or it was, it's a painting that Esau put together. But notice it says, if not darker. Of course he was darker. Okay? So it says, for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob must have been as dark as Mar Yohanan. Now the first part, all descended from brown ancestors. Read on. Exhibit every shade of color from the black Jews of Malabar. Next highlight. The Spanish Jew is always dark complexion, and his hair is uniformly black. So the Jews that were in Spain are saying they were black. Always dark complexion. Go ahead. The various shades of color observable among the Negro or African race. Now they often, when many scholars use the word Negro or African to mean for anybody of darker complexion. Go ahead. Tends to the same conclusion along the coast of Guinea which is low, marshy, marshy, and hot. We find jet black complexions. And this is the very country from which African Negroes... No, American. Excuse me. American Negroes have been derived. So notice how they are comparing the American Negroes with these Jews. So, like, my point is this. All the old scholars know that the Jews are black. It's these new guys of today... After the time of emancipation, where they begin to say, you got to start doing better than that, hide this truth. Because remember, when these books were published, we weren't allowed to read and write, the majority of us. So they were not afraid of us getting or learning this information. So let's go back to Luke chapter 4. Thank you, Alicia. Luke chapter 4, and I believe you're in verse what? 16 or 17? Uh, Verse 16. Okay. Verse 16. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. And he came. So I just, I, the reason I wanted that first, so when we're reading about Christ, you knew people, get your mind right. Christ was not Caucasian. He was Negro, black. You got that? With wool hair, thick lips, and a wide nose. Maybe not as wide as Malachi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias. And when he had opened the book, 
he found a place where it was written. Now, Isaiah says Isaiah. Now, this is what he read from the book of Isaiah. Read. Verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Because he's supposed to explain it. Go ahead. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. So now he says today this scripture has been fulfilled. Dang. Now when you read it in its entirety, the, the whole congregation got mad and they tried to kill Messiah. That's right. So this is a scripture that references the term gospel, and it's one of my favorite scriptures. But I want to go through it slower, Amaziah, from verse 18 again. Yes, sir. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, it's referring to Christ, but I want you to see that what we're reading also goes for us today. Because Christ has died and resurrected and gone into the heavens. So now his disciples have been less left here. His students, the believers, have been left here. So what does it mean for us today when it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me? How do you get the spirit of the Lord? Is it the wop baba loop bop or wop bam boom that Christians talk about? No. Give me that in Proverbs. Let's go to Old Testament first. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23, please. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 23. Yes. Verse 23. Turn you at my reproof. Turn you at my reproof, meaning turn you at my commandments. Why does it say turn? Because we've been walking away from God's reproof, away from his commandments. The Bible says turn, meaning turn back to it. Read it again. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. So in order for the spirit to come upon us, we must all turn at God's reproof. There's no way you can get the Holy Spirit and you're going away from God's commandment. Can somebody tell a Christian that? You didn't get to do no commandments? Then you don't have the spirit of God in you. You don't have the Holy Spirit. Or the, as our brothers say, the, the Ruach HaKadosh. They want to sound so smart. Now, let's go to the New Testament, John 14, 15. The book of John, chapter 14 and verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Read. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. So he says, if you love me, keep my commandments and and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Who's that, Read Even the Spirit of truth. So if you want the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, it says what? Verse 15 again. If ye love me, keep my commandments. That's the same thing the Lord said in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23. If you want the Spirit of the Lord upon you, you want the Holy Spirit, you must Keep my commandments. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. Okay? Give me that in Joel 2. Let's go on back to the Old Testament. Joel 2, which prophesies of today. Watch this. Bear with me. Let me look at it first. Joel 2, I want you to look at verse 28. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. Now, this is what a Christian does. This is what a slow belly Christian does. Verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. You see that, brother? The Lord sent out his spirit upon all flesh. Everybody got the spirit of God in them. You don't need no daggone commandments. Really? Let's start up at verse 27. Let's keep it in this cultural context. Verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. In the midst of who? Israel, uh -huh. and that I am the Lord your God and none else. I am the Lord your God, you Israelites, and none else. See, a Christian won't read that. They will purposely avoid the text and go, no, 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 no. 
They are taught in cemetery school. That's right, I said cemetery school. They are taught not to read verse 27. Start at verse 28 so we can include our BS into the text. Read it again from 27. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. We shall never be ashamed, brothers and sisters. Never shall we be ashamed. Come on. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So who is God going to pour out his spirit upon? His people, Israel, and none else. Understand this thing. Read. And your sons and your daughters and shall... And your sons and your daughters. Not everybody's sons and everybody's daughters. Your sons and your daughters shall what? Shall prophesy. This is the power the Lord has given us. He said, you, I'm not giving you that power that Moses had in the last days. I'm not giving you the pow power that uh, Elijah had in the last days. And I'm not giving you the power that Christ and the disciples had. I'm giving you something a little easier for these last days. What? Read that again. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Uh -huh. Your old men shall dream dreams. Mm -hmm. Your young men shall see visions. That's right. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And remember the stipulation for getting the spirit of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is what? Keep what, brothers and sisters? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Read. Verse 30. And I will shew wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Uh -huh. this, this is all the last days. Go ahead. Blood and fire and pillars of smoke. War and destruction is coming. War and destruction is coming to the United States of America. War is coming to Babylon the Great. Go ahead. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. Read. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Who says that? Whosoever. See, see, see. Here's a Christian grinning. See, it said whosoever. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Read. Shall be delivered. Shall be delivered, read. For in Mount Zion. For in Mount Zion. And in Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem. These are two names for the children of Israel. Go ahead. Shall be deliverance. Deliverance ain't for all nations on the planet Earth. As deliverance del is only for the children of Israel that is scattered in all nations on the earth, planet Earth. Go ahead. As the Lord hath said. And in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. And in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Let's go back to Luke chapter 4, please. Luke chapter 4. Again, one more again. The book of Luke chapter 4 and verse 18 again. Mm -hmm. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel. He, he hath anointed me to preach the gospel. Go ahead. To the poor. I want to start with that. Preach the gospel. Let's start there. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Give me that in Romans 10, 14, 15, please. Romans 10, verse 14, 15. The book of he Romans. He hath anointed me to preach the gospel. For the first thing, before you preach the gospel, the spirit of the Lord must be upon you. In order to get the spirit of the Lord, which is the Holy Spirit, even the spirit of truth, we must be keeping God's commandments. That's the stipulation. Now, once the Spirit comes upon us, we are anointed to preach the gospel. Read that, Romans 10, 14, 15. The book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 14. How then shall they call on him, call on him in whom they have not believed? How can our people call on the Lord in whom they have not believed? Go ahead. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how can they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Our people have not heard they're the Israelites. Our people have not heard that the Israelites are a black and brown people, that Christ is their black savior. They've never heard that. All, of, all they've heard for centuries is that the savior is a white man with blue eyes and blonde hair and pink red skin. And he gave his life for black and brown people. Really? Yeah, he, gave, he died for it. He just loved us so much. Mm, don't you believe it? Read it again. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Mm -hmm. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they hear without a preacher? What kind of preacher? A pre the word preacher, remember. The word preacher is another word for prophet. Uh, the word preacher is another word for prophet. Pre means future tense, to foretell. 
preacher means to foretell. Foretell what? What's in the book? You're prophesying what's in the book. Okay? So it says, and how shall they hear without a preacher? In order to be a preacher, you got to have the Spirit of God upon you. In order to get the Spirit of God upon you, you must be keeping the commandments. There is, uh, what's the word? There is stipulations. stipulations. Go ahead. Verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? The next thing it says, and how shall they preach except they be sent? Go ahead. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. That preach the gospel, the good news of peace. Go ahead. And bring glad tidings of good things. And bring glad tidings of good things. Glad, I want you to write that. Glad tidings of good things. Go back to Luke 4. No, 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 no. Before you go, go get there. Give me Matthew 28, 19. Matthew 28, 19. I'm still talking about preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. So who, what, when, where, why? The book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Go ye therefore, teach all nations. I see a Christian right now is smiling. See that? Go ye therefore and teach. When a Christian hears, go ye therefore and teach all nations, that means white folks. I'm going to explain what I mean by that. How many Christian churches are going to our brothers and sisters scattered in the diaspora? Not near one. Right. Not one. They're so busy being occupied uh, with the Chinese and white folks. They're not thinking about their brothers and sisters that's been scattered worldwide. They don't give a dag on. Read it again. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Read. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the worlds. Amen. Amen. So what does it mean, go ye therefore and teach all nations? Give me the precept, Deuteronomy 4.27. Teach all nations. Christian smile. See, see? That's the Greek, and that's the Yugoslavian, that's the Polish. No, no, no. It's not talking about that. Deuteronomy 4.27, about the Israelites. Listen good. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 27. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. And the Lord shall scatter you. You who? You Israelites among the nations. Scattered where? See, a Christian don't even think about it. Scattered in places from Africa to where to? Brazil, Central America, South America, the Caribbean islands, North America, Canada, Iran, Iraq. Okay? Scattered worldwide. Whether you call it the transatlantic slave trade or the sub-Saharan slave trade. But a Christian don't think about that. They could care less about their own people being scattered in slavery. Ask your mothers if they even give a damn. If they even mention it in church. Never. Read that again. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. And you shall be left few in number among the heathen. Whither the Lord shall lead you. So let's go back to Luke 4 please. Let's go back to Luke 4 again. Read it again. Read it again. The book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 18. I know a Christian right now. Just think, I'm not sure. You just hold your horses. Go ahead. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me mm -hmm. because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The gospel is meant to be preached to the poor. I'm going to say it again. The gospel is meant to be preached to the poor. But who's the poor? See, the Bible answers itself. Never ask a Creflo or a TD or any of these these. Uh, Slow belly Christians, what does it mean? Because they don't they will not give you a biblical answer. Give me Isaiah 1432. Yes, sir. Who is the poor the gospel is meant to be preached to? Isaiah chapter 14, verse 32. What shall one then answer the messages of the nation? That the Lord hath founded Zion. The Lord hath founded Zion. Zion is another name for the twelve tribes of Israel. Read. And the poor of his people. And the poor of his people. Shall trust in it. Shall trust in it. So the gospel being preached to the poor is only toward Zion. That's right. I said it. It's Israelites only. Israelites only. That's, right. That's who the gospel is meant to be preached to. Okay. Not to no daggone Yugoslavian or Polish or Russian. What the hell is wrong with you? It's meant for our people scattered in these various countries and lands, cities and states. Countries as well. Okay. Give me that uh, Psalms. I mean Isaiah 10. Isaiah 10. 1 and 2. The book of Isaiah, chapter 10, verse 1. 
Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees. The Bible says, woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees. Meaning what? They make laws. Okay? They make, uh, what's it called? What's the thing the president writes? They make policies and executive orders, which is against the Lord's people. Read it again. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees mm -hmm. and that write grievousness which they have prescribed. See that? And, and that write grievousness which they have prescribed. I'll give you an example. Don, our, not our, your president, <laughs> Donald Trump, he wrote an executive order saying that Judaism is no longer just a religion. It is now a race. What race? The Caucasian race that they planted or colonized in the land of Israel from 1948. That's an unrighteous decree. Yes, sir. Read. Verse 2. To turn aside the needy. So the, the purpose of these unrighteous decrees, these policies, these executive orders is to do what? To turn aside the needy from judgment. To turn aside the needy from judgment. You don't get no more needy than black and brown people. The 12 tribes of Israel. You don't get no more needy than us. Go ahead. And to take away the right from the poor of my people. And to take away the right from the poor of my people. Hold this. Hold that. Hold that. Hold that. Give me that Matthew 2, 6. When it says my people, brother, it doesn't mean the Israelites, really. Because it says, you know, a church lady. The Bible says, the only scripture she knows, the second scripture she knows, if my people, which are called by my name, right, she doesn't right, even understand right. the damn thing she ain't reading. In my people, uh, which are called by my name. What does that mean? Who's God's people that's called by his name? Anybody that believe in Jesus? It is not. Read that, Matthew 2, verse 6. Matthew chapter 2, verse 6. Is it 6 or 16? 6. Okay, go ahead. And thou Bethlehem. And thou Bethlehem. In the land of Judah. In the land of Judah. Go ahead. Are not the least among the princes of Judah. You're not the least of the princes amongst Judah. Go ahead. For out of thee. For out of thee, out of you, Judah. Shall come a governor. Shall come a leader. Go ahead. That shall rule my people Israel. That shall rule my people Israel. Three words. My people Israel. My people Israel. Not my people Caucasian. My people Israel, it says. See, you, you, once you start to read and keep the Bible in its cultural context, your mind will start to open up. But as long as you're listening to Christians, you're going to be a slow belly. Damn. Going back to Luke, Isaiah 10, I mean, Isaiah 10, 2. The book of Isaiah, chapter 10, verse 2. To turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people. So that's to take away the right of the Israelites. Go ahead. That widows may be their prey mm -hmm. and that they may rob the fatherless. They destroyed our families from the time of slavery on up when they separated Sons and daughters from mothers and fathers. Even then when you bring it on up, separating fathers from the household. That's what they did. That's what they did. Let's go on back now. Let's go on back to Luke 4. Nope. Mm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want that yet. Give me Matthew 5, 3. Matthew 5, verse 3. How could I forget this? Yes, sir. The book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For this is the kingdom of heaven. Now we understand who Christ is re referencing. When he says, blessed are the poor in spirit. The poor is who? The poor of my people, Israel. That's who the poor is. Blessed are the poor in spirit. To be poor in spirit means what? What does that mean? It means we've lost a lot. We're needy. Why are we needy? Because we've lost our culture, our heritage, our land, our language. We've lost our God given minds right. see because you might say I hear, I hear Christians say that means if you ain't got no money it's for you that ain't what it's necessarily talking about Nicodemus was rich the gospel was for him Joseph of Arimathea was rich the gospel was given to him so it's not necessarily talking about your financial status it's talking about your spiritual status no matter how rich Oprah is or give me, uh, what's the brother that tried to buy uh, the network Bill Cosby not Cos uh, oh. Cosby too, but oh. I Byron, 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 Byron Allen. Allen. And there's several others who are very wealthy, but guess what they all have in common? They're poor in spirit. They've lost their minds, their culture, their heritage. They've lost it all, okay? 
Your financial status does not raise you above the status of your people. I hope everybody understands that. Give me a Deuteronomy 28, verse 43. Still talking about the poor. Now I'm going to get to financial now. Deuteronomy 20, as a nation, not as an individual. Listen, I'm getting to it as a nation, not as an individual. Deuteronomy 28, 43, and verse 44. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 43. The stranger that is within thee. Meaning the other nations. The other nations outside the nation of Israel. Shall get up above thee very high. Shall get up above thee very high. Get up above the Israelites very high. Let me make it clear. Go ahead. And thou. And thou, you Israelites, you black and brown people. Go ahead. Shall come down very low. You shall come down very low. Very low where? In society. Read. He shall lend to thee. These other nations shall be the bank lenders. Go ahead. And thou shall not lend to him. We're not the lenders. Go ahead. He shall be the head. These other nations shall be the head. And thou shalt be the tail. We are the tail in society as a nation. We are the bottom nation in society. So let's go back to Luke 4. Now that was a curse put upon the children of Israel as a whole. Not as an individual, as a whole. So back in Luke 4, 16, please. Verse 18? Yes. Verse 18, yes. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Now, all these things that we're reading, Christ did. But guess what? Christ has died, resurrected, resurrected, and ascended on high. It's our job now. So it said, he has sent us to heal the brokenhearted. Give me Psalms 147. Who are the brokenhearted? What does that mean? Psalms 147. Let's start at verse 1. The book of Psalm, chapter 147, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant, and praise is comely. I heard a brother say it's wicked to sing praises unto the Lord. He goes, look at these wicked Israelites on God's high holy days, singing and dancing. They're evil. And you have, and you get, they're getting thumbs up from these idiots, these bum, bum, bumbleites. Read it again. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God. That's right. Come on. For it is pleasant, and praise is comely. Praise is beautiful. Read. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. The outcasts of Israel. Keep that in mind. Go ahead. He healeth the broken in heart. He healeth the broken in heart. Go ahead. And bindeth up their wounds. And bindeth up their wounds. What made us broken in heart that we needed our wounds bounded up? Because we became outcasts. How so? How so? How so? We became outcasts when we were scattered throughout the Americas. Outcasts when we were scattered throughout the regions of Africa. Outcasts when we were scattered to Iran, Iraq, Pakistan, and India. Places of that sort. Wherein we lost our culture, our heritage. We lost it all. So now we're the brokenhearted, okay? We are the wounded that needs healing. Go on back. No, from there, from there, from, from there. Give me um, Isaiah 59, 11. Isaiah chapter 59. I want verse 11. Yes, sir. The book of Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. We roar all like bears. And mourn sore like doves. We roar all like bears. You see this in the streets. When our, our sisters like Sandra Bland or Breonna Taylor are murdered, shot down, hung, murdered. Tamir Rice. We roar like bears. You hear the brothers in the street roaring like bears. That's a form of weeping. That's a form of crying. And then it says, and mourn sore like doves. Those are the sisters who mourn sore like doves. Crying for the death of our sons and daughters, our brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers. Go ahead. We look for judgment. We look for judgment. No justice, no peace. We look for judgment. Go ahead. But there is none. But there is none. There is none. There is none. Even when you get a black attorney, like, what's his name, Cameroon? Ben Crump. Cameron. Ben Crump. De no, not Ben Crump. He's a lawyer. Daniel Cameron. Okay. Who goes up and manipulates the jury. Okay, so that there's no true justice. 
So we roar all like bears. We mourn so like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none. Go ahead. For salvation, but it is far off from us. We look even for salvation, but it's far off from us. This is why a lot of our brothers and sisters say that they got their mindset. There is no God. How could there be a God and we suffer day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year? This is why a lot of our people are brokenhearted. Then you go to the Christian, open up the Bible, ah, shut the hell up. Right. The old Jesus stuff. Where's the justice from Jesus? Where's the judgment? Christians ain't got no answers. That's why our people need the gospel. That's good news. We have the good news. Don't worry, bro. Don't worry, sis. Judgment is coming. Justice is coming. That's right. Yes, of course. You know what's amazing about what, because this class is excellent, what Bishop was bringing out, because um, our people are looking for answers. And when they see these promulgated preachers that are posted all over your television, all over the media and all of that, you would, if you didn't know this gospel, because that's what we're bringing out, you would think that the Bible is actually being taught by these people. And then you are aching inside. You're aching and you don't have all of the injustices that you see with your, with your own black eyes. You see it. You see it. And then none of these preachers say anything about it. So you naturally your thought will be, well, God ain't got nothing to say. He ain't saying nothing about our condition. Right. And that is a plot to make our people think that the Bible does not talk about them. The Bible is not discussing them. And then they'll go look into other things. And then when the truth, like what we're bringing out, comes out, they try to say, that ain't the Bible. Right. That's the evil behind it. What book is that? Exactly. <laughs> what book are y'all reading? Brothers be astonished on the street. They're like, that can't be the Bible. That's, that sounds like my photo album. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Bishop. Exactly. Alicia, I want you to find me the video on, uh, from uh, Birth of a Nation. I just love this one scene where uh, Nat Turner is ordered to try to get black people in that Christian state of mind to not think about oppression. You know what I'm talking about? Bertha, I, I, I don't remember the name of the clip. Zeph, if you know, let me know. Help me out here. Whoever knows, please, please just help us. It's one, it's, it's one scene. It's like maybe two minutes long. Yeah, that's it right there. I want, now, now I'm a, what we're about to look at right here, this is the gospel to the brokenhearted. Watch this. I want y'all to pay close attention. This is what, brother, after Sandra Bland was murdered, after Breonna Taylor was murdered, when our people hear the gospel, the, the truth of the Bible, watch the reaction. Watch this. Brethren, I pray you sing to the Lord a new song. Sing praise in the assembly of the righteous. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praise of God be on the mouths of the saints and a two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the demonic nations and punishments on those peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them this written judgment. This honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sing to him a new song. Now, that's gospel. That's gospel right there. That's God talk right there. That's right. Give the Lord a hand for that thing. All that oppression. And you hear that thing right there? That, that gives you goosebumps. That cheers your spirit. Just imagine all these mega churches read, bring that out in their congregation every time a situation of, of, of uh, injustice happens. Right. That's Psalms 149 for you Christians. Because I know you don't like to look things up. That's good news right there. Give me that Isaiah 38, verse 14. The book of Isaiah, chapter 38, and verse 14. Like a crane or a swallow, 
So did I chatter. Like a crane or a swallow. Those are two birds. So did I chatter. Talking about grief. Go ahead. Go ahead. The next part is going to explain the chattering. Go ahead. I did mourn as a dove. I cried like a dove. Go ahead. Mine eyes fail with looking upward. Mine eyes fail with looking upwards. Go ahead. Oh, Lord, I am oppressed. Undertake for me. So why are we looking up? Because we are oppressed. Oh, Lord, undertake for me. Fight for me, God. Fight for me. This is what we just saw in that clip. That's why our people need the good news. The gospel is not for all people on the planet Earth. The gospel is for the oppressed. Let's go on back. Let's go on back. Luke 4, 18 again. The book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance of the, to the captives. To preach deliverance to the captives. To preach deliverance to the captives. Are all nations on the planet Earth in captivity? How stupid can a Christian be? The gospel is meant to be preached to the captives. Captivity. Talking about, give me another word for captivity. Slavery. Let's make it easy. Let's make it easy. Watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 28, 41. To preach deliverance to the captives. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 41. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them. Why? For they shall go into captivity. For they shall go into captivity. That means slavery. The gospel is meant for the oppressed. That's in slavery. Hey, Alicia, do me a favor. Put the map on the board. You will not enjoy your sons and daughters because they shall go into captivity. That's what God says. This is God talk. You ain't going to understand. If you ain't got the spirit of God on you, you ain't going to understand the damn thing we're talking about. You put it on the main screen. Can we see the, uh, the, the key, the, the code key on the far left? Can you zoom in on that on the far left? That's as far as you could go in? Okay. Well, the, the green lines is the European captivity. The red lines are the uh, East African uh, captivities, meaning our people that was taken from the... Uh, East side of Africa and the west side. Let's start for the right side. Move over to the right side. Okay, can you zoom in on the right side, Elisha, at all? Okay, I want y'all to see where they took us. I want y'all to see. This is the sub-Saharan slave trade. From, the, from Africa, I want y'all to look where they took us. Y'all see that some arrows go to Arabia? You see that, Elisha? Up towards the Ottoman Empire. That's at the top, Elisha, top. Yeah, right, the Ottoman Empire. Some of us was taken to Persia. You see the, go over down, up, 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 right there, see the arrow? That's Persia, we were taken there, Arabia. Now, see the arrow from Ethiopia, it's going up to the island of Sri Lanka, and then it goes out, and I think the map ends there, okay? So that's the East African slave trade, also called the Sub-Saharan slave trade. And see the, uh, you can see the numbers there. What does it say, 700,000? I can't see it too close. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's 700,000. Okay. Now, that's the East Afri African slave trade. So, right. this, read it again. Read it again, uh, uh, Amaziah, Captain Amaziah. Read it again. Deuteronomy 28, 41, please. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 41. Uh -huh. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, uh -huh. but thou shalt not enjoy them. For they shall go into captivity. Jump down to verse 64, please. Verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Go ahead. From the one end of the earth. From the one end of the earth. Even unto the other. Even unto the other. And what will happen? And there thou shalt serve other gods. And there you shall serve other gods. Go ahead. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Our fathers and mothers did not know nothing called Allah. I'm going to say it again. Allah did not exist until five or six hundred years after Christ. So we didn't know nothing called Allah. What the hell are you talking about Allah? What are you talking about Mecca and Kaaba stone? What are you talking about? It did not exist. Go back to the map. Go back to the map. Go back to the map. So that's the ones on the right side. The East African slave trade. 
taken throughout the Ottoman Empire, taken up throughout Persia and Arabia, Sri Lanka. Then you get the Green Lines, which is the European slave trade, wherein they took us to, look, look where they took us, Seville, you got Lisbon, uh, Portugal, Seville, Spain, Europe, you got London up above that, okay? Look at it, Europe, they took 50,000. Let's go on down, go on down. Let's go out, let's bring it over. Mm -hmm. Look, took us to Brazil, also South America, Central America, look at the island, look at the islands. Look at the small islands of Antigua, Dominica, Grenada, Jamaica, Martinique, St. Vincent, Cuba, Cuba, St. Dominique. Yeah. Right, this is the quest. These are the places we was going to, hitting. Mexico, okay. And this is why I wanted to show you, once we went to these places, guess what we did? We had children with our brothers and sisters on this side of the world. That's why they got those various, what's, it, what's the word we, was it not subspecies? I don't want to say that word. Give me a word. Uh, give me a nicer word, not subspecies. Uh, uh, can somebody help me? Different complexions. Different complexions and categories. With the, uh, you got your whole Negro. You got your three-quarter Negro. Your half your mestizo. <laughs> things like that. Right. You Latinos know what the hell I'm talking about. I know black people are confused. What are you talking about? Uh, go up. Go up. Okay, North America they took us to. Now, this map doesn't talk about Canada, but they took us up there in Canada, too. Okay. So read that again. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Read that again. Deuteronomy 28, verse 41. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. So the gospel is meant to be preached. What does it say? To preach deliverance to the captives. From there, give me Isaiah 5, verse 13. Isaiah 5, verse 13. And the gospel is for everybody, brother. No. No, no. <laughs> the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. My people are gone into captivity. My people are gone into captivity. Read. Because they have no knowledge. Why did we go into captivity? Because we have no knowledge of God's commandments, of God's laws. We started to reject the commandments, just like Creflo teaches today, just like all Christendom teaches today. So we went into slavery. We went into captivity. Read. And their honorable men are famished, mm -hmm. and their multitude dried up with thirst. Jump over to chapter 22. Isaiah chapter 22. And I want verse 17. Isaiah chapter 22, verse 17. Listen good. Behold. The Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity and will surely cover thee. Behold, the Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity and will surely cover thee. Read. He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. See that? See that? See that? We were tossed like a ball into a large country. What does it mean to be violently turned and tossed? That's somewhat on the oceans. On the oceans. Alicia, go back to the map. Go back to the map. Show them. How do we get from that continent of Africa to the Americas? By ship, by boat. Okay? We had to cross the Atlantic Ocean. We had, the, during the Sub Saharan, we had to cross the, uh, I can't, we had to cross the Mediterranean Sea. We had to cross the, uh, what's that sea right there? I can't see. The one on the right, on the far right. You got the Red Sea right there to get into Arabia. Red, Red we crossed sea. the Arabian Sea. There are various seas we, they crossed us on ship to get to these various. Give me that Deuteronomy 28, 60, 68. Abia, what are you going to say? Hey, this shows you right here, Isaiah 23, 17. When you got these other nations, when we bring out Deuteronomy 28th chapter in the 68th verse, these other nations will say, oh, well, the Irish went into slavery or this other nation Listen, this is a mighty, where is it at? A mighty captivity. This is going to be of biblical proportions. This ain't no secret hidden captivity. These other nations trying to cleave to it and say, oh, yeah, we were slaves too. No, the world knows that we went into slavery by way of slave ships. This is us. This is talking about us and nobody else. Deacon, that's enemy talk. 
Right. When you try to speak and you say that this is about us, and they say, well, so-and-so went into that, that's, that's the disrespect what you're trying to bring out. We don't want to hear you in the Bible. That's hatred. Yeah, Just yeah. got to understand that's what they mean. As nice and as Christian that they can be. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, uh, well, so-and-so went into captivity too. As soft and sweet as they can speak it, they're speaking venom. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah people don't realize when God do things, God don't do little things. Right. God is a God of light. He do big things where you cannot deny what he does. Right. You understand? These dumb nations, you understand? They're thinking we don't know. Hey, listen, God dealing in a bigger scale. When he's dealing with the nation of Israel, everybody, every nation will acknowledge it. Come out of Egypt, every nation is knowledge it. Come out of America, every nation is going to acknowledge it. These are the people of God. That's right. And remember this. Uh, Pope Nicholas V started the transatlantic slave trade. Pope damn Nicholas V. <laughs> Write that down in case you forget. It was him. Give me that in uh, 68. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. And the Lord shall bring thee into slavery again. The Lord shall bring you into slavery again. That's what Egypt references. Again with what? With ships. With ships. Elisha, come on. Come on. Elisha, put some ships up there for me. Help me out here. Come on. Don't have me drowning by myself. Come on. I need you to stay with me. Don't go to sleep over there. Uh, Huh? Where? Where? I want slave ships. I don't want a yacht. We didn't come over here by yachts. Show me a slave ship, please. Because you got to remember, some Christians are slow bellies. They are slow. Yeah, yeah. Put it on the put it put put it on the screen. You can just put the whole thing on the screen. Re- read it again, Cap. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. With ships. What kind of ships? Slave ships. Slave ships. Go ahead. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Read. And there. Once we got off the slave ships, whether it was in Sri Lanka, whether it was in Arabia crossing the Red Sea, whether it was in uh, Greece as it crossed the Mediterranean, whether it was in uh, uh, London or North or Central America crossing the Atlantic, Read, ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Ye shall be sold unto your enemies, 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 enemies. Go ahead. For bond men. For slave men. And bond women. And slave women. And no man shall buy you. No man shall buy you or redeem you from the curse God put us in. Does everybody understand that? Let's go on back to Isaiah 22. 17, one more again, one more again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 22, verse 17. Behold, the Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity. The Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity. This captivity wasn't small. Just like Deacon Laba said, it was mighty. Everybody heard about it. Everybody took part in it. Go ahead. And will surely cover thee. Uh Uh-huh. He will surely cover thee. Violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. Right. We were tossed like a ball across the oceans into a large country. Go ahead. There shalt thou die. And we have died. It's spiritually dead. We died spiritually. We lost our language, our culture, our heritage. We lost everything. Go ahead. And there the chariots of thy glory shall be the shame of thy Lord's house. Because the little armies that we had that was in Spain and other places in Africa was destroyed, decimated by the so-called white man. We lost it all. From there, give me Jeremiah 22, 22. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 22, verse 22. The wind shall eat up all thy pastors, and thy lovers shall go into captivity. (laughs) Read it again. The wind shall eat up all thy pastors, and thy lovers shall go into captivity. All of our, including, see, the, our, our pastor, our pastor's so stupid. He don't, re, the Negro don't realize he's in captivity to this day. Damn. And all those that com, we committed adultery with. It says, let's read it again. The wind, talking about captivity, shall eat up all thy pastors and thy lovers shall go into captivity. Can you tell a pastor the nigga's a slave? 
The dude is this simple as hell. Read. Surely then shalt thou be ashamed and confounded for all thy wickedness. These pastors, the adulterers, shall be ashamed. It says, surely then that shalt thou be ashamed and confounded for all thy wickedness. So pastor, here you are in captivity with us. Why are we as a race, we as a people in captivity? Well, nobody knows God does things in mysterious ways. Ah, oh, shut the hell up. Put the Bible down. You can't even open it and read it and expound on nothing. But you know all the money scriptures. Give me a Jeremiah 50 and verse 33. The Bible says to the, 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 preach the gospel to the captives. That's what the Bible says. Jeremiah 50, 33. The book of Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 33. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. The children of Israel. The children of Israel. And the children of Judah. And the children of Judah. So to go back to the map, go back to the map, go back to the map, Elisha. Put it on the board, put it on the board, put it on the board. So you had the children of Israel, put it on the board, Elisha, throughout Canada, North, Central, South America. How do we know that? It was written in 2nd Ezra 13, verse 40 through 45. The northern kingdom of Israel came on this side of the world. Does that mean all of them were here? Not all of them. A lot of them were scattered else places too. Understand that. So, read it again. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. Were oppressed together, 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 together. Who are we oppressed with on this side of the world? Native American Indians, the Boricuas, the Dominicans, okay? Y'all understand it, the Arawak Indians, okay, so forth and so on. That's for you. Oh, no, they didn't go, the Indians didn't go into captivity. Like, well, you dumb as hell. Read a book, why don't you? Well, what about the five civilized nations that had us as slaves? The white man made a, a pact with them to enslave our people. And guess what? One of them will go into Chronicles when it show, shows the same thing. The white man made a pact with what they called the five civilized nations. Then when the white man went and checked up on them, it was the tribe of Reuben that had set Judah as princes and leaders amongst them. And they got mad at Reuben, mad at the Seminoles. and said, not that. What the hell are y'all doing? They're not to be princes. They're meant to be slaves amongst you. That's why the Bible said Reuben would be honor honorable. The hell is this? Let's go on back. So the Bible said to preach deliverance to the captives. Read it again. 18. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Mm -hmm. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. And recovering of sight to the blind. Now these things Christ did literally. He, he healed men and women that were blind. We don't have that power today. What's the power that we have today to uh, recovering of sight to the blind? First off, we got to see and acknowledge that we are blind. Give me that in Deuteronomy 28. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28, this is one of the curses upon the whole nation of Israel. This curse is upon all 12 tribes. Watch what it says. Deuteronomy 28, 28 and 29. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 29. 28, that, 28. Yeah, 28. 28. Verse 29. No, 28, 28. Oh, 28 and 20. I'm sorry. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. The Lord will smite thee with blindness, madness and with blindness and astonishment of heart. Meaning what? It's talking about our minds. Psychological defects. Okay, that's what I mean by madness. Blindness meaning we cannot see truth anymore. We can't see nothing God has put forth for us. We would be stricken with blindness. Read. Verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. And we're like the blind that gropes at noonday as blind people grope in darkness. So we got eyes, but we can't see what God's trying to show us, what the Lord is trying to teach us. We're like blind people. The sun is right there. The word of God is there, but we can't see it. So we like blind people, unable to comprehend, unable to understand. The Bible says you were going to slavery on ships. Well, I don't understand. Everybody went into slavery. 
The Bible says Christ would have hair like wool, his skin like burned in the furnace. No, Jesus is white. The, sun, the Bible's right there. You're looking at it. You're reading it for yourself, and you can't see it. That's what you're Christians for you. Cannot see it. Read. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. Give me Isaiah 59, 10. Right. We don't prosper. Go ahead. Expound on it. Go ahead. Thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. The preacher's supposed to be reading this and, and illuminating that scripture. If you look at the prison population mm -hmm. in this country, in America alone, you have more than 2 million people in prison. Nearly half of the population is black men. And we only supposed to represent like 6 to 7% of the whole population in, in America, black men. Right. But nearly half of the black, of nearly half of the population in prison is black men. So nearly a million of our men is locked up in prison. And you telling me the preacher don't see that? Mm -hmm. His slimy, wicked behind. You mean to tell me he don't see that? None of those no good preachers have even said anything about it. Right. You remember he said, that shall not prosper in our way. Let me show how blind we are. In the black community, right? Where their wealth is, right? So why the other nation? We cannot see the wealth. The other nation will come, establish store, put stores in it, buying these, these houses. But us, we live there. The wealth is right there. Why don't we just stop buying it, fixing it up? Because you're blind. You're blind. You cannot see what's good for you. These curses hit each one of us in many ways, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. If half of our men, if, if half the prison population, nearly half of it is filled up with our black men, what kind of hole does that leave in the families? What kind of hole does that leave in the communities? And think about all of the problems that come as a result of the absence of black men. Drugs, homosexuals, uh, 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 abuse in the household. Don't learn how, not learn how to be uh, reared up by men to teach them how to be successful fathers and husbands, they don't learn any of that. They, be, they automatically become criminalized as drug dealers, as stick-up kids and stuff like that. And these preachers have not went into the gaps right. to deal with any of that stuff. Don't speak about that. Isaiah 59? The book of Isaiah. Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 10, correct? No, let's start at verse 9. This is a precept for what we read in Deuteronomy 28. Verse 28 and 29. Okay? The, the book of Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 9. Therefore is judgment far from us. Therefore is judgment far from us. We want true judgment. We want justice as a people. We want it. When we look at the Philando Castiles of the world, okay? And the atrocities are still, even when our people go to the land of Israel, I'm going to start again. I'm moving to Israel. They get the hell kicked out of them, spit on. Y'all seen the clips we showed you. It don't matter where we go. I be, I'm going to go to Libya. Then they end up as slaves. So therefore, it's judgment far from us. Go ahead. Neither does justice overtake us. Neither does justice overtake us. Go ahead. We wait for light. We wait for light. But behold, obscurity. But behold, confusion. We want to see the light come forth in various cases. But what ends up coming? Obscurity. We're like, what the hell? How the hell did the, the white man get off? He shot it. You see it on video. We are on video. They broke his neck. And he still gets off. We wait for light, but behold, obscurity. Go ahead. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. We wait for brightness, but we walk in darkness. Go ahead. We grope for the wall like the blind. We grope for the wall like the blind. We're like blind people looking for, uh, uh, what's the one you're trying to hold on? Uh, support. Stability. Support. And there's none. Read it again. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We grope as if, as if we have no eyes. We got eyes. We see what we see, but we don't understand it. So that's what it means. We, we grope as if we had no eyes. Go ahead. 
We stumble at noonday as in the night. We stumble at noonday as in the night. In noonday, the gospel's coming out. We're trying to explain to you that we went into slavery for our sins as a race, as a people. And we're like, I don't understand. I'm confused. No, no, that, that can't be right. Jesus is all love, 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 love. But your brother, uh, Sandra Bland, just got murdered. Yeah, love, Jesus is love. Don't even talk about it, brother. Tamir Rice, Flannel can't steal. Look, look, Mike Brown, look, what's going on? I'm confused. I don't understand. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Just say, Jesus, make your teeth white seven times. Jesus, 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 Jesus. The hell is this? Go ahead. We are in desolate places as dead men. We are in desolate places as dead men. Men spiritually dead. Okay. From there, give me Isaiah 29, verse 18. Isaiah 29, verse 18. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29, and verse 18. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. See that? See that? That's what I'm talking about. It says, and in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. Where the deaf? Go ahead. And the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity. That's you men and women now. Your eyes have been opened. The recovering of sight to the blind is now. Now you can see what the Lord has been trying to show us. I see what the Bible is saying. I see with my own two eyes now. Go ahead. And out of darkness. The read, meek, read that again. Read that again. I just lost something. Go ahead. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. Mm -hmm. And the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. We're seeing out of obscurity and darkness. Now we understand what the Bible is saying. The pieces of the puzzle are falling in place. I understand now. This is why this and that happened. This is why this continues to happen. Give me that uh, Isaiah 42, 16. The book of Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 16. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. The Lord says I will bring the blind by a way they knew not. We're the blind. The Lord said I'm going to bring you by a way that you never knew before. Go ahead. I will lead them in paths. That they have not known. I'm going to lead you in paths that you have not known. Which paths is God's law in Christ. Go ahead. I will make darkness light before them. The Lord said, I'm going to make the darkness of this world light before you. We're going to understand. We're going to see and comprehend. Go ahead. And crooked things straight. And the crooked things of this world, the things that are out of order, that make no damn sense. How the hell did they get off? The Lord, what he's saying in essence, I'm going to bring justice, true justice to this earth. That's what it means when they say, I will make, uh, where's the part about the crooked, where's that at? Read that part again. And crooked things straight. straight. Go ahead. Right. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. These things will I do unto them, the Israelites, and not forsake them. Let's go back to Luke 4, please. Verse 18 again, I believe it is. Yes, sir. The book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. To set at liberty them that are blind. To set at liberty. Give me that in Deuteronomy 28, 33. Deuteronomy 28, 33. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 33. We need liberty because while, because while we're incarcerated in this prison house, we are constantly being bruised. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 33. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed and crushed always. We're reading crush there because that's a part of us being bruised. We're reading crush there because that's a part of us being bruised. Okay, give me Isaiah 1 and 1. Let me look at it. Let me look at it. Let me look. Let me see. Isaiah chapter 1. Yeah, start at verse 1. The book of Isaiah chapter 1, verse 1. We're reading this to set at liberty them that are bruised. Go ahead. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amaz, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Mm -hmm. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against so me. So the Lord nourished us. He meaning what? He did what? He nourished us with his laws, his statutes, his commandments. 
And what did we do as a people? Rebelled. Read. The ox knoweth his owner. So now he says the ox, a dumb ox knows his owner. Go ahead. And the ass, his master's and crib. And an ass, a jackass knows his master's crib. Go ahead. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. So we're not as smart as two of the dumbest animals on earth, God is saying. The Israelites don't know their owner. We don't know that we are the sons and daughters of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We're the sons and daughters of God Almighty, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We don't know that. We don't know our master's crib, which is Jerusalem, the city of God. We don't know that's our motherland. We, no, 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 no. That's not the motherland. It's wherever you were born. No, it's Jerusalem. That's the mother of us all. We don't know that. Read. And in essence, verse 3 is saying, you don't even know your identity. That's what it's saying. You don't know your nationality. You don't know your race as a people. Who else fits that? Right. Who else fits that? Only us. Only us. Go ahead. Verse 4. A sinful nation. Ah, sinful nation. Go ahead. A people laden with iniquity. We are a people laden with sin, breaking of God's laws. Read. A seed of evildoers. We are a seed of evildoers. I know some of us want to think we're all righteous. We didn't come... To the shores of America because we were righteous. We weren't scattered throughout North, Central, South America, Sri Lanka, Iran, Iraq because we were righteous. It was because we were laden with iniquity, laden with sin, rebellion against our God. Read. Children that are corrupters. We are children that are corrupters. Go ahead. They have forsaken the Lord. We have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel. And if you, in case you didn't know who it was talking about, the Holy One of Israel. 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 Read. We are Israel. Go ahead. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. We've gone away as a people backward, away from the Lord of heaven and earth. Read. Why should ye be stricken anymore? Why should ye be stricken anymore? This is getting into our, us being bruised. Remember Deuteronomy said we would be crushed and oppressed always. It said to set at liberty them that are bruised. So it says what? Why should ye be stricken anymore? Go ahead. Ye will revolt more and more. Mm -hmm. The whole head is sick. The whole head is sick. And the whole heart faint. Go ahead. From the sole of the foot, even into the head. So the entire 12 tribes of Israel, from Judah down to Issachar, that's the whole 12 tribes, from the head to the feet. Go ahead. There is no soundness. There is no soundness. In it. But wounds and bruises. But wounds and what's that word? Bruises. 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 Why did we get those bruises? Because we revolted against the Lord of heaven and earth. We lost our identity. That's what verse 3 is saying. We lost our identity. We've forgotten who our God is. We've forgotten our motherland. We've forgotten it all. We've lost our culture. So as a result, it said, why should you be stricken anymore? How do we get stricken? When we went into slavery, captivity, and were oppressed. We'll, ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. The whole heart is faint. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises. Go ahead. And putrefying sores. Meaning pus sores. So we're just like, we're a sick. We are Lazarus. That's what this verse is saying. When a parable about Lazarus at the foot of the rich man and the dogs licked his sores, this is what this is talking about. Read verse 6 again for us. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores, they have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. See that we have not been healed. That's what it's saying. We are sick people from the head to the toe. Okay. Going back. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 again. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. And recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Give me that in Galatians 4 and 4. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. What was that talking about? What was the acceptable year of the Lord? Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. Mm -hmm. But when the fullness of the time was come. It's going into the acceptable year of the Lord. When the fullness of time was come God sent forth his son God sent forth his son made of a woman made of a woman 
made under the law. Christ was made under the law. Guess what? There is no law regarding immaculate conception. I'm going to say it again. There is no law regarding immaculate conception. So wipe the mind clean. Let's stop being slow bellies listening to these dumb, evil Christians. Christ was made under the law. Under the law, it stipulates when the man lays down with the woman having the seed of copulation. And when she brings forth a male child, he must be circumcised the eighth day. And then a sacrifice must be given. That's what it means he was made under the law. There's no law regarding immaculate conception. I hope you Christians out there in Wonderland can understand that thing. Read it again. Galatians 4 and 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Read. To redeem them that were under the law. To redeem them that were under the law. That was not all nations, brothers and sisters. The law was given to Moses, given to the 12 tribes of Israel. So Christ came at the acceptable year of the Lord to do what? To redeem them that were under the law. Give me that, give me that, give me that. Psalm, is it Psalm 78, 5? Give me that. In case right now, I know somebody's online. Wait, 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 does it say it only if you had the law? I'm going to give you some easy scriptures here. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel. The law was only given to Israel. The law was only given. Give me Psalms 147, 19 and 20 now, please. The hell is this? All you Christian slow bellies, just listen. The book You're of Psalms. All right. Go ahead. Chapter 147, verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob. He showed his word unto Jacob. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. But what about the other nations? Go ahead. He hath not dealt so with any nation. God has not dealt so with any nation. He has not given them his law, statutes, commandments. Go ahead. And as for his judgments, and as for his judgments, they have not known the them. The nations have not known them. Go ahead. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord for that things. See, the Bible is, uh, is, 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 what's the word? Is segregation. It's about one race of people. As, as a matter of fact, I'm going to say it. That's right. It's racist. It's for one race of people. You get mad if you want. Get mad if you want. Here's a quarter. Go call your mama. Let's go on back. Go on back to Galatians 4 and 5. No, start at 4 again, 4 and 5. Yes, sir. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. That we, we, we who? Those that were under the law. That we might receive the adoption of sons. That's the acceptable year of the Lord. That's why Christ stood in the synagogue and says, this day, this scripture has been fulfilled. <laughs> Going back. Go back. Uh, give me Isaiah 61, 1, please. The book of Isaiah, chapter 61 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Still talking about the gospel. The gospel, I'm going to say it again, is not for everybody on the planet Earth. The gospel is for the oppressed Israelites that went into captivity, that are still in captivity. Read. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me mm -hmm. because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. To preach good tidings unto the meek. To preach good tidings. Good tidings is the gospel. Good tidings means good news. Good news to who? The meek. Give me that. Um, uh, Matthew 5. It's right there around verse 3, but it says the meek. It might be above it or below it. I'm not looking at it. You know what I want? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got it. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. See that? Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Watch this. Give me that in Daniel 7, 28. Blessed are the meek. And understand this word meek. It doesn't mean to be shrew like a mouse. It mean, remember, it says Moses was the meekest man in Israel. Meaning what? Moses was obedient. When you talk about somebody so humble, it don't mean, the Bible don't you, when it talks about humble, it don't mean soft-spoken. That's not humble. You could be a quiet, soft-spoken demon. 
Like Deacon Yahweh Sop said, they'll say that Jesus is white with so, so nice, soft. Jesus is white. And it's all poison coming out of his or her mouth. Humble and meekness has nothing to do with the tone of your voice. Humble and meekness refers to your obedience to God's law. Brother go, oh, my wife is so humble. Your wife ain't humble. She got a, not only does she got a big mouth, as quiet as she speaks, she's evil. Why? Because she is disobedient to the word of God. I was talking with a Christian sister the other day. She goes, praise God, praise Jesus. So she was running her damn mouth. So I, I gave her the scripture, let your women keep silence in the churches. Uh -oh. She responds back with so quiet and so soft spoken. We don't accept that in this church, brother. That's a demon. That's a demon right there. I don't care how soft her voice is. It's a demon. A black, ashy demon. Where we at, Cap? Daniel 7.28. Yeah, read that. The book of Daniel. Now, why do we go there? It says the meek shall inherit the earth. Read this. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 28. Hither too is no, the... No, read 27. I'm sorry. Daniel yes, 7, 27. How could I miss that? Go ahead. Yes, sir. Daniel 7, 27. And the kingdom and dominion. And the kingdom and dominion. And the greatness of the kingdom. And the greatness of the kingdom. Under the whole heaven. Under the whole heaven means the whole planet earth. Shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high. Shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high. Who are the saints? Can you give me the precept? Who are the saints for the new people? Who are the saints? Who the earth's going to be given to? Christ said what? Blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. What does that mean? We're reading what it means now. Psalm chapter 148 verse 14. Mm -hmm. He exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. So the saints are the children of Israel. That's going back to Daniel 7, verse 27 and 28. Daniel chapter 7, verse 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. The earth shall be given to the Israelites. Go ahead. Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And our kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom. And all dominions shall serve and obey him. And everybody on the planet earth shall serve and obey Christ. Go ahead. Hitherto is the end of the matter. That's what the whole Bible's about. That's the whole plan of God. That's the spiritual strategy of God. That's the gospel right there. His whole plan, his whole strategy. All that we as a people have gone through at the end of the day, God's plan is I'm giving you back the earth. It's yours. Take it. <laughs> back to Matthew 5 so we don't forget the thought. That verse again. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So now we understand. Blessed are the meek. It's talking about those humble and meek Israelites that obey the commandments of God. We're going to rule the earth once again under Christ. That's the plan of God. That's the spiritual plan, the spiritual strategy of God. Back to Isaiah 61. Read it again. Yes, sir. Okay. When Moses had all those heads hung up, that was an action of being meek. <laughs> you, you heard what I said? Because a lot of people think that meek means let's just soft business. Be, to be meek means to obey God. God said, have those heads hung. Here's All another them, example. Remember when the dudes were selling stuff outside right, Jerusalem? Right, Nehemiah right. said, you keep selling stuff, I'm, I'm going to lay, lay hands, hands on, on you. That was meek business That's meek. there. <laughs> we're saying that because this, 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 this misunderstanding of what meek means is, t is total Christianity crack. That's what it is. It ain't the Bible. Where we at, Cap? Isaiah 61 and verse 1. Read. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Do we understand that already? He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Go ahead. To proclaim liberty to the captives. The gospel is only to pro be proclaimed to the captives, those in slavery. Go ahead. 
And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Wow. Give me that in Isaiah 42, 7. The opening of the prisons to them that are bound. And you know, Deacon, you were just talking about the mass incarceration. America's like 5%. I was watching your class the other day. Go, go yeah, that. America represents 5% of the world's population. Mm -hmm. Of the world's population. Basically a nickel compared to a dollar. But yet, a quarter of the world's population is in the prisons in this country. And nearly half of them is black men. Mm -hmm. Isaiah, Isaiah 42. Mm -hmm. chapter 42, verse 7. Go ahead. To open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison. See that? To open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison. Go ahead. And them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. See that? And them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I know you didn't understand, but... America is a prison house. We were brought to this prison house to serve slavery. Jamaica's a prison house. Haiti, too. That's right. Dominican Republic. Puerto Rico's a prison house. Because why? Those are not our lands. Okay? Once the white man conquered and took them over, those are his lands now. Our land, our motherland is Jerusalem. He said, because that's the truth. We were brought over here to serve slavery, okay? And after the so-called emancipation, we were supposed to be freed, right then came the 13th Amendment. And what happened with that? That clause in there allowed them to make slaves out of the so-called freed ones. And the only thing they needed to do was, was frame a system that, that shunts you into criminality. Therefore, you have your slaves again. That's where we're at. Because this, this, this engine cannot run off of a different fuel in which it was made for. This country was made to run off of slavery. And the minute they abolished slavery, the economy stopped. So they had to figure that out. So in figuring it out, they said, we need to create slavery under a new name. Call them criminals. And engineer, engineer criminality and put them in prison, and we can make our money again. And America is now more richer off of, off of the so-called freedom than when, when, than when they had chattel slavery. There's an article on it. They said America has, is more richer now than when, when we was in, in chattel slavery. <laughs> Jump down to verse 22. Watch this. Isaiah 42, verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. In case you didn't know it, brothers and sisters, we are a people robbed and spoiled. Go ahead. They are all of them. What does it mean robbed and spoiled? They've taken everything from us. We often talk about our culture, heritage, language being taken from us, our minds. They also took our silver and gold. They took everything. And when the Bible says we are robbed and spoiled, the Lord means that. He's, he's bringing out things that we don't, don't even consider. Some of us think we was just running through the midst of Africa with grass skirts on top of unga bunga, unga bunga. Oh, hell no. We was ruling there. We was the leaders there. And we ruled in Russia and Italy and Holland and Amsterdam and Spain and Portugal. That's right. And they, we were rich and wealthy. They took everything from us. This is why the white man says, no, we cannot give them reparations. Why? Right. Because one of them might wake up and go, wait, 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 wait. What you did to us goes beyond what America did. It goes back before that. There might be a smart Negro among them that's going to figure things out. Them group of Israelites out there. Because they might get the audacity to open their goddamn going mouths. White man said, no, no, don't give them nothing. Because once you open them floodgates, it's over. Don't give them nothing. Give them jobs. Give them welfare. Give them food stamps. Read it again. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. And they are hid in prison houses. We all hid in prison houses. Yes, our brothers and sisters, our brothers and sisters incarcerated. But it goes beyond just that. See, we, 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 we're so blind. We don't see America as a prison house. We see this as a land of freedom and opportunity. You saw if it's the land of freedom and opportunity and freedom. What happened with uh, Nick Cannon and Deshaun Jackson tried to speak a little bit of truth? 
the boot came down on their necks. You can only say but so much if you're given opportunities to make this or that. Okay? Now, when you speak truth, they put you on a hate list. You are a hate group. They just shut down our live stream. They shut down the live stream saying, no, 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 we, can't, we don't want you on here. Read it again. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. And they are They hit. broke the contract we have to my live stream. We had a contract with them. And they broke the contract. Right. You know how they deal. They said with the contract. They said, let me see your contract. You ripped it up. What are you talking about? Bishop. Yeah. That's how you know we are the prophets of God. Right. That's right. What is it that we're saying that's so destructive to America? We're turning boys into men. We take, yeah. We're turning gang members into men of God. We're turning hoes into daughters of Sarah. Men are becoming fathers. Women are become, becoming mothers. And that's dangerous? We need to shut you down? That is dangerous. We're waking up the prisoners. Oh, man, you forgot. We're, wake, we're waking up the slaves. Yep. And once you wake them up, then they can't prosper for them anymore. That's what the threat is. We're changing the mind of the homosexual to be a man. That's what God created you to do. We're changing the mind of the lesbian to be a woman. That's what God created you to be. Read that again. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, and none deliver There's nobody delivering us as a race, as a people. Who's delivering us? Nobody. Go ahead. For a spoil. We're talking man on earth. Nobody. Go ahead. For a spoil. We're for a spoil. And none saith, restore. Who says? Think about the world courts. Which court? World court I'm talking about. I ain't talking about a little uh, uh, municipal palace over there. I'm talking about world courts. What world court is saying restore to the Israelites all that was taken from them? Restore their culture, their language, their heritage. In fact, restore the lands that was taken from them. Restore the wealth that was... What, who's speaking up for on our behalf? None. Nobody. Nobody. Okay. When you're looking at that map, all those areas where the Israelites were scattered to, all the places where we were taken to, an economy was built off of slavery. So a world economy was built off of the, off of the destruction of the Israelites. All over the world, wherever they took us, an economy was built off of robbing us, off of enslaving us, off of uh, taking advantage of us and, and, and working us for free. A world economy. The whole planet Earth benefited when Israel went into captivity. Yeah, I mean, look at Daniel Trump and the other clown. It's which one of them will stand and say, "Let's pay them for what the uh, what we build America on." America was building our back. Which one of your, which one of the white boy you gonna vote for? Who's gonna restore you me what you lost? Showing you, you're bugged out your mind, man. You're a bunch of bugged out people. Which one of the white boys say they're going to pay us for, the, for slavery, for, for, for oppressions? You understand? Which one of them? But guess what? November came. They got their black uh, 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 clown in the line. Elisha, can you put that letter up for me, please? Let me show you what Vimeo. Vimeo is who we had a contract with for live stream. This is the letter we received from Vimeo. The un, I'll tell you, when I say the white man's the devil, they're the devil the Bible speaks of. This is the letter, put it on the screen, put it on the screen. From John, hey, and, uh, uh, read this for us. Can you read this for us? Yes, sir. So that y'all know I ain't making nothing up. And all you lawyers out there, we need your help because the white man is evil as the day is long. Oh, read that, read that from John. Read that, John who? Uh, John Fogelman. Fogelman, corporate counsel admitted in Florida in-house counsel in New York State. Um, it jumps out. Down October 9th, 2020. October 9th, 2020, by email, attorney at gismithlaw.com. I'm going to jump down to this, Mr. Smith. All right. Dear Mr. Smith, 
on behalf of Vimeo, Inc., I am writing in response to your email of September 10th, 2020, concerning Vimeo's non-renewal and termination of the service order from dated July 26, 2017, between Israel United in Christ and Livestream LLC, a subsidiary of Vimeo, parentheses, the agreement. Section 5.5 of Vimeo's Terms of service, service provides that hate groups and their members may not create or maintain accounts. The Southern Poverty Law Center, a widely regarded authority on hate groups in They're the United not States. They're an authority. That's not no government sanctioned organization. The hell is this? Go, go ahead. I'm just sorry. Go ahead. I, I ain't going to interrupt you. It just annoys me has designated IUIC as a hate group. As a result of this designation, which we view as conclusive, IUIC's account must be closed. Mm -mm -mm. In addition, IUIC has breached the content restrictions in our acceptance use policy, section 5.3 of our terms of service, by uploading hateful and discriminatory speech as well as content that contains false or misleading claims about vaccination safety as shown in Annex A. Thus, <laughs> God, thus in addition to the hate group restriction, IUIC's content is simply incompatible with our platform. Contrary to IUIC's argument, Vimeo's reliance, reliance the SPLC's hate group's designations does not evince events discrimination on any ground protected by any applicable civil rights laws, including 42 U.S.C. 1981. Indeed, in Coral Ridge Ministries Media, Inc. vs. Amazon.com, the court, scroll up, go up, the court dismissed a religious discrimination claim based upon Amazon's reliance on, you got to go down a little bit. Move me out the way, move me out the way. Down, down. Reliance on the SPLC's designation of a hate group as of a group as a hate group. Further, Vimeo's decision as to what accounts to allow on its platform are protected by Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act of 1996, 47 U.S.C. 230. Wow, they're saying we are indecent. Mm -hmm, we're indecent, yeah. To no. this, to this end. Vimeo recently prevailed in a case alleging religious discrimination. See Domen vs. Vimeo, Inc., number 19. I'm going to jump to the next paragraph. In August, Vimeo provided notice of his decision and the ability for IUIC to download his videos from Vimeo's video hosting platform so that it can migrate them to another platform. As a courtesy, we are hereby extending the date of, of termination through and until 6 p.m. Eastern Time on Friday, October 23rd, 2020. We strongly encourage IUIC to download its videos to preserve them. Should you have any questions, please contact me directly. So when we say the white man's the devil, we mean that thing. This is unjust, so we don't, we don't have freedom of speech. That does not, our freedom of speech does not apply to Israelites oh. reading the Bible. What does that say right there? To decision Malachi, what was you to terminate account that published anti-LGBTQ. No. Right, y'all see that crap right there? Of course, we speak against the LGBTQ community as being a sin that's against their policy. So what is this actually saying? Because we're looking at this on this level. But what they're really saying is that we're going to terminate our contract with the Bible. That's what they're really saying. Because everything that we're talking about is biblical. Let's go on back, Captain Amaziah. Yes, sir. <sighs> we're in uh, Isaiah 42, verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. And they are hid in prison houses. That's what I want. I didn't finish that prison houses thing. Go ahead. Wait, read the next part. They are for a prey and none delivereth. Right. Go ahead. For a spoil and none saith restore. None saith restore. No, who's saying restore? You see this injustice they're doing. And nobody speaks up and says, hey, that's not right what y'all are doing to the Israelites. Give me uh, Psalms 146 verse 7. Psalms 146 about opening prison houses. The book of Psalm, chapter 146, verse 7. 
which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. I want you to see what it just said. It said, which executeth judgment for the oppressed. Go ahead. Which giveth food to the hungry. Go ahead. The Lord looseth the prisoners. The Lord is the only one that's going to loose us. Only the Lord can do it. Marcus Garvey tried. He failed. Malcolm X tried. He failed. Martin Luther King tried. He failed. Sojourner Truth tried. She failed. Harriet Tubman tried. She failed. Then Mark Vesey tried. He failed. Nat Turner tried. He failed. Nobody can loose us from this prison house but the Lord. That's what it's saying. Give me Zechariah 9, 12. We weren't free from this prison house. The book of Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 12. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. You know what the stronghold is? The Bible. You know what the stronghold is? The Bible. This Bible is the stronghold. So it says, turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. We are prisoners who are always hoping for a better day. Always hoping for our reparations. Always hoping for this. Always hoping for that. Never realizing that this is a prison house. Read. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. God's going to render double unto us. Watch this. When I have bent Judah for me. The Lord said, I'm going to the tribe of Judah, the kingdom of Judah. Go ahead. Fill the bow with Ephraim. And I'm going to fill that bow with Ephraim. Go ahead. And raised up thy sons, O Zion, mm -hmm. against thy sons, O Greece. Read. And made thee as the sword of a mighty man. So that's that change. The Lord said, we, we, you might be in prison right now, but I'm going to loose you from that prison house. And I'm going to make you like a what? Like the sword of a mighty man. Can you imagine us as a nation of people being transformed into a sword of a mighty man? That's spiritual power. That's what he's saying. Because believe it or not, even the flesh we live in right now, this is a form of a prison house. Because it's weak. We lack the power necessary to overcome. So the Lord says, I'm going to loose you from all the prisons you're in. I'm going to loose you. It ain't just America I'm going to loose you from. It ain't just from the jails I'm going to loose you from. I'm going to loose you from that body you into. And I'm going to make you like the sword of a mighty man. That's what God says. That's, right. That's what Paul referenced in 1 Corinthians 15. About we shall not all sleep, but we all shall be changed. In the twinkling of it. That's God level. That's what he's talking about. Now, from there, give me, go back. Go back to Isaiah 61. Yes, sir. <clears throat> that was something, you had something you want to say? Yeah, yeah. You know, I was thinking about how the haughty gloat in their victories as they think their victories against Israel. When they put that letter up there and terminated the contract, they just said, we don't care about how correct you Israelites are. We don't care about that. We can shut you down whenever we feel like it. And the Most High got them thinking that way. Can I just read one scripture, Bishop? Give me Exodus. Because their, their, their joy is going to be short-lived. So they're gloating right now. They're celebrating. Because they, they, they hope to do this on all platforms. I understand where they're going, and we understand where they're going. Give me Exodus 9 and uh, 16. The book of Exodus, chapter 9 and verse 16. Because brothers, SPLC, they all in agreement with Satan. All of them. How in the hell are you going to talk about hate speech when your whole country was built on hate? Right. How in the world are you going to talk about hate speech when you've taught our children about a white Christ that doesn't exist and cause our people to hate themselves? How in the hell are you going to do that, you bunch of devils? How in the world are you going to do that? Read. Exodus, chapter 9, verse 16. And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up to sh for to show in thee my power. That's what the Most High is going to do. So while they're busy gloating, they're slapping high fives and all of that about what they did, God caused them to do that. Because when the Lord destroyed their behinds, he's going to destroy them in our presence. That's going to be an excellent thing. It's going to be wonderful to see that. That's it. That's all I needed. Y'all know how it goes. They're they, going to pay for that. They're going to try and shut us down on all platforms. On, and I'm going to say this to you they, Israelites exactly. out there. Exactly. If your whole teaching is based upon internet platforms, I want you to think about this. If you are a man of God, I want you to think about this right now. If you're an Israelite, 
if the white man shuts down your internet or the internet from Israelites, how effective will you be without the internet? That's for you Israelites afraid to go on the street and teach. You hide in your room and type magnanimously. You type very powerful. But when you hit the streets, you're like a mouse. You're afraid. You're not a man of the Lord. You're a fraud. All you Israelites and your whole thing is the internet, you are a fraud of an Israelite. That's right. you're, you're a sham. I'm telling you straight. Now, let's go on back now to Isaiah 61. Now that I hurt your feelings... I hope you just consider it and just check yourself before you wreck yourself. Give me that. Yes, sir. Isaiah 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, we already explained the acceptable year of the Lord. That's when Christ was born. That's when he gave his life for the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, watch this. Though. Watch this. Go ahead. And the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. And the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. So what y'all don't realize, glad tidings, the good news, the gospel is meant. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and, and the day of vengeance of our God. Nobody talks about that. Right. No Christian talks about the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. We need to hear about vengeance. C come on. That's considered hate speech right there. This is a sweet smell to Israel, but it's a smell of death to our enemies. There you go. That's it right there. I want to talk about the day of vengeance just for a minute. The day of vengeance comforts all that mourn. Let me say it again. The day of vengeance comforts all that mourn. That's the gospel. No Christian on earth talks about the day of vengeance. How can vengeance comfort all that mourn? Because the day of vengeance is for the oppressed. We want justice. We want vengeance. Here we go. Here we go. Isaiah 34 verse 8. The book of Isaiah chapter 34 verse 8. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. That's what the Lord told me. Let's go back. Let's back up in the chapter. Let's back up. Where do I want to go to? Verse 4. Mm, let's start at verse 4. Isaiah 34. No, no, no. Start at verse 2. Isaiah 34, verse 2. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. The indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. You Christians want to talk about all nations? Well, here you go right here. Read. And his fury upon all their armies. And his fury is upon all their armies. Go ahead. He has utterly... That's the armies of America, the armies of Britain and France and Germany, Russia, China, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq. All their armies. Go ahead. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath utterly destroyed them. Go ahead. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. God's delivering the nations to the slaughter. Go ahead. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses. Mm. Go ahead. And the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And the mountains shall be melted. You know the only thing that can melt somebody? Thermonuclear fire. Vengeance, baby. Vengeance. Read. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. All your satellites, America's space force shall be what? Shall be dissolved. Shall be dissolved. Go ahead. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. That's that. Alicia, can you find me a mushroom cloud? Find me a mushroom cloud. It says, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. Come on, Alicia. Find me a mu mushroom cloud. We got to see it because I know some Christians right now is watching and they're slow. Put one on the screen. Find one, find one. That's what it means when it says, this is what it means. Put it on the screen, put it on the screen. This is what it means when it says, and the host and the heaven shall be rolled together as a scroll. That's that mushroom cloud. Boom, baby, boom. There you go. You right on. You all right, Alicia. You all right. That's what it's talking about, that thing right there. This is the day of vengeance. That's therapy. That's ther this is therapy for the sick. The sick in mind, the broken hearted, 
This is therapy for our soul, for our minds. The sound of salvation. That's right. <laughs> the gospel. Read. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down. Their satellites, their rockets, everything America got up there in space shall fall down. Go ahead. As the leaf fall from off the vine. They're going to fall down like leaves fall off from the vine. Go ahead. And as a falling fig from the fig tree. Just like a fall, the fig falls from a fig tree. Go ahead. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. God's sword shall be bathed in the heavens of the nations. Go ahead. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. It shall come down upon Idumia. Can we look that up, Felicia? Let's look this thing up. Because I don't know who Idumia is. And a Christian sure as hell don't know. Just put it on the screen. Idumia. This is therapy for your mind. Therapy for your soul. Idumia. Greek name for Edom. I thought the Edomites were done away with. Right. The, hey, the urban apologetics say that, and Jehovah's Witnesses say, the Edomites were done away during the time of Saul. So do you mean God is crazy here? Right. It shall. That's future right. tense. <laughs> for my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall, future tense, come down upon Idumia. So Idumia is in power today. Edom is in power. Who's Edom? America, that's Edom. That's the white Caucasians. Russia, Britain, London, that's Edom. All these Caucasians, France, Germany, they're Edom. Read it again, verse 5. Read it again. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. And upon the people of my curse to judge them. God's going to judge them. Read. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. Mm -hmm. It is made fat with the fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats. You know what is blood of lambs? The blood of lambs and goats is the nations. It's, being, it's a metaphor for them. Go ahead. With the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath had a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. That's in the land of the white man. That's America, Britain, all these places. Go ahead. And the unicorn shall come down with them. And a the rhinoceros shall come down with them. That's what it's talking about when it says unicorn. Go ahead. And the bullocks with the bulls. And their land shall be soaked with blood. America, France, Germany are going to be soaked with blood. Go ahead. And their dust made fat with fatness. Read. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. This is what comforts all that mourn. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. Go ahead. And the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. And the year of re recompense means judgment or payback. The big payback. That's right. For the controversy of Zion. Because it, it's a controversy. Who is Zion? Who is the land of Zion belong to? It's a controversy, a world controversy. From there, from there, from there, from there. Give me... Um, Isaiah 35, we just, I want 35 and 4. The book of Isaiah chapter 35, verse 4. Say to them that are of a fearful heart. So black man, black woman, Latin man, Latin woman, listen good. The Bible says to say to you, it says say to them that are of a fearful heart. Read. Be strong. Be strong. Read. Fear not. Be strong. Fear not. Be strong. Fear not. Be strong. Fear not. Go ahead. Behold. Your God will come with vengeance. Your God will come with vengeance. You hear this? Your God will come with vengeance. Go ahead. Even God with a recompense. Even God with a recompense. Go ahead. He will come and save you. God's going to come and save us. That's what the Bible says. So what, 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 when the thermonuclear destruction comes, World War Three, and the second the, the, the coming of the Lord, y'all going to get it too? Oh, no, we not. The Bible says God will come and save us. It's a day of the Lord's vengeance. A vengeance for you other nations. Go ahead. All right. The Most High said, only with thine eyes shall thou behold and, and see the reward of the wicked. So that's going to, 10,000 going to fall out your right side and, and 1,000 on your left side, but it shall not come nigh thee. The Most High going to be taking us up while he's destroying our enemies right in our presence. Here you go. That's going to be, that's a, that's a hell of a thing, man. That's some beautiful stuff right there. Mm -hmm. That's gospel. That's gospel. That's Nate Parker bringing out Psalms 149 to, right. to, the, to the captives that exactly. morning Zion. <laughs> Give me that Mac, Micah, Micah, Micah. Didn't we read about Micah? It said he was a prophet to the Moors. Right. Right. Let's see what Micah prophesied to the Moors. Chapter 5, verse 15. Micah, chapter 5, verse 15. 
And I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen. I will execute anger and vengeance and what? Upon, and I will execute vengeance. Vengeance? And anger. And anger? And fury. And fury! Upon the heathen. Upon the nations. Such That's thus saith the Lord. Go ahead. Such as they have not heard. Such as they have not heard. This is going to be, this is the day of vengeance. The nations ain't never heard a judgment that's about to drop on their behinds. Was that it? All I want yes, was 15. That was Psalms it. 94 and 1. Psalms 94 verse 1. Psalms 94 verse 1. You know yes, yes, yes. Any kind of language that the slaves speak is going to be considered hate, hate speech. speech. Right, right, right. right. You got to think about that. Anything that the captives would talk about would be considered hate speech. Mm -hmm. And the mere fact that they move against you for speaking it shows you that they hate your guts. Right. That's why the white men created loitering laws. Exactly. Two or three blacks say, hey, what you talking about over there, boy? Right. Separate, so, separate. Because they, they said they might be talking insurrection. Right, exactly. Why? Because they've done abused and oppressed us and mm, crushed mm, us mm, for so long. They said, surely they're about to try to rise up against us. That's letting you know, just like the scripture saying, Baruch, we are still in our enemy's land. Mm -hmm. Read that. Psalm chapter 94, verse 1. Listen good, listen good. Here it come. Oh, Lord God. To whom vengeance belongeth. Mm. O God, to whom vengeance belongeth, shew thyself. This is the prayer. It said, O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongs. O God, to whom vengeance belongs, show yourself. We want the Lord to come and bring forth vengeance quickly. Watch what Christ said in Luke 18. Luke 18. There ain't no Christian on earth talking about this thing. Luke 18. We're going to start at verse 1. Christ going to he gonna give us a story. The book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 1. Mm -hmm. You want to wonder, what, what, what should we pray for? Well, here you go. Here you go. Pray for vengeance. And Watch he, this. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. That's the key word we want. Avenge me of mine adversary. Revenge me. Give me vengeance against my enemies. That's hate, that's, that's hate speech. Go ahead. Verse 4. And he would not for a while. And this unjust judge would not hearken to the old widow for a while. Go ahead. But afterward, he said within himself. But afterward, the unjust judge said within himself. Though I fear not God. Though I fear not God. Nor regard man. And I don't regard any man on earth. Yet, because this widow troubleth me. Because this widow annoys me day after day, crying and pleading with me to give her vengeance. I will avenge her. I will avenge her. Go ahead. Lest by her continual coming, she weary me. She tiring me out. Go ahead. And the Lord said. Hey, watch this. Hear what the unjust just judge saith. Hear what the unjust. Now he's going to break it down. What this whole parable means. What it's talking about. Go ahead. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he be along with them? And shall not God avenge his own elect? Give me the priest for the elect, for the Christians. Mm -hmm. Who is the elect? Who is God's elect? Isaiah. Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake. And Israel, mine elect. Israel, mine elect. Israel, mine elect. Israel, mine elect. Go back. Yes, sir. Luke 18, verse 7, once again. Luke chapter 18, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And shall not God avenge his own I elect? Israel, mine elect. Israel, mine elect. And shall not God avenge Israel? Go ahead. Which cry day and night unto him. Which pray, which pray day and night Day and night. Go ahead. Though he bear long with them. Though he bear long with them. Go ahead. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. I tell you, God will avenge the Israelites speedily. Go ahead. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? By raise a hand, raise your hand. How many of you pray for vengeance against the enemies? Oh, everybody ain't got their hands up. Hmm. Hmm. I might... Consider y'all might be telling, but this side over here, hmm, okay, sisters, okay, we're going to give you a thumb up. All of us should be praying for vengeance. That's what the Bible says. We ain't got no vengeance. What we saw, like I always say, 
You don't think what happened to Breonna Taylor, we wanted to do something? You don't think we sat there mad on the brink of tears, want to get together and do some nigga stuff? But the Bible says, pray for vengeance. Yes, sir. Pray for vengeance. What are you going to say, Abiel? Come on. This here is supposed to be music to your ears. Yes, sir. When you hear this thing, like I said, all of us, we feel it. When we clock in, we hit that, that nine to five, you got that Edomite telling you, nigga, get to work. You got to remember and fall back on the scriptures. And guess what? Our day is coming. Let me get Ezekiel. Ezekiel, the 35th chapter real quick. The Lord, God is a God of vengeance. If you don't understand that, I don't know what Bible you're reading. Ezekiel 35, we're going to start, I'm going to get to the point. Give me verse 5. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 35. All of this is coming full circle back on the nation that has forever hated us from the beginning. This perpetual hatred that he had against us or has against us. Go ahead. Ezekiel chapter 35 and verse 5. Read. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred uh -huh. and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity. He has shed the blood of the children of Israel. We, we speak about things in our time. Like I said, Breonna Taylor, Trayvon Martin, Mike Brown. We bring up these things that, that's happened in this day. But this has been going on. This has been happening. From the beginning, he has hated us and wanted to kill his brother. Right. Go ahead. In the time that their iniquity had an end. Uh -huh. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood. In the time our iniquity had an end. You understand that they knew exactly when to move against us, y'all. We fell. We messed up. We didn't want to keep God's right. commandments. Therefore, they took advantage. Like it says, what's that? Was it Judith? The fifth chapter? Yeah. They knew when God, hey, listen, when these people fall away from God's laws, we can move on them. Esau took full advantage. It says, therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood. Go ahead. And blood shall pursue thee. Shall what? Shall pursue thee. Come on. Sith thou has not hated blood. Sith is since. Since you didn't hate blood, Edom. Go ahead. Even blood shall pursue thee. Blood's going. Summer, hot, please don't be a dummy. We'll be in summer, then you'll see it coming. Cool, stick a fork, please. 
yourself cause you're done Gave a blind man sight, he need money Bruh, can't even count, still keep on it Life from the sun don't get more stunning Damn, neon in the night We some kings like Hezekiah You are high, so alive We might never even die Got a mansion in the sky I mean, you should see the size I want some freedom with some fries I changed my mind like never mind Shine like neon in the night Blacks and Hispanics are getting killed. And they're like, nah, repentance? Nah, I don't want to read that book. That's the white man's book. Bruh, this is all about you and your history. Every answer that you need is in the Bible. It's called the book of life. When these saw kills one of us, my people always see it. I thought black lives matter at one another. We squeeze and be like, nudge me. Step on my kicks or something. Got some heat on my side. Like, nigga, give me your reason. Go How ahead. do you expect your enemies to love you, brother? When we kill one another and don't love each other. Facts. According to Hosea Facts. 5 and 15. God will return to his place till we acknowledge our fits Bring and seek out. his face. Get Any out. black person can be your next blood stain. While the devil gets away and a family feels pain. But some don't realize. The devil's front of your eyes He will smile in your face While planning out your demise Woo! He'll walk by, Woo! say hi Turn around, bullets fly As you lay on the ground Thinking, yo, I'm really about to die Give the devilish friend Then put more bullets in ya He is not your friend No white man is a pretender Cause the truth Is so plain to see Hello, black or Hispanic, that God only loves you. Read it out the Bible and they say the Bible's not true. Flip the Deuteronomy. Read all the curses and the other nations. Their whole duty is to be served. Bring the other out. nations are like a drop falling from a bucket. You got the rest of your water, so you really not bugging. But God calls Israel his delicate woman. Isaiah 44, 1 and 2. Whom God has chosen. They will try to say that's our own interpretation. Second Peter's 1 and 22. No explanation. This is what God's saying, bro. Brother, there ain't no debate, and we keep casting down strongholds and imagination. So I will get my soul right when my king does strike. He's gonna be the sum like a thief in the night. Garment dressed in blood like you were stopping in the wine press. You can say on the Lord's day is literally a bloody mess. Woo! To our people, it's all fun and games with giggles. Dropping biblical knowledge, making plain no riddles. The real prophets on the streets, as it is written. Not in million dollar homes collecting ties you keep giving. See, Pueblo wants your dollars. Uh -huh. TD is a Okay. Joel Osteen is what, but God Eve, a snake. Oh. I said we make it plain, so there is no question. We keep it 100, they keep it 100% fake. Because the truth is so plain to see. Yeah. In the words of Bishop Nathaniel, and with that, we say, Shalom. 